Hi, guys. This is Emmy with the Graveyard Shift Talk Show. I've got Jonathan on the line uh, from the American Red Cross. Jonathan, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're a busy man, and uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to get on the air with us to talk about uh, the recent um, disaster uh, in Houston with Hurricane Harvey. Um, can you give us uh, just an overview of, of just really how things are going over there? Yeah, well, I'm at the uh, George R. Brown Convention Center in Houston, where last night over 6,800 people sought uh, shelter from the American Red Cross, and that's just one shelter. We had over 240 shelters across the state of Texas that had over 33,000 people. Uh, so to give your uh, listeners a sense for what is going on here in this one facility, uh, about 6,800 people, like I said, in shelter, but it's actually a massive outpouring of support from a variety of organizations. So uh, over 2,000 Red Cross volunteers engaged in this effort, uh, but our partners from the military, faith-based groups, I've seen a number of college campus groups here uh, doing everything from uh, sorting donated goods, providing hot meals, um, you know, sitting down and just talking to residents to hear their story as part of a psychological first aid effort. Uh, we also had the local YMCA here uh, that put on a kids area here in this facility uh, just to give kids a chance to, to laugh and, and have some fun. Uh, you know, it's been a long couple of days for them. And then obviously we have medical care uh, and a variety of other services all aimed at helping the residents here in this facility start the recovery process. Well, that sounds good. I mean, it sounds. I mean, it sounds like they're getting a lot of help, and that's 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 good to hear. Um, how? I mean. At the very least, that should help their spirits, you know, because we've been hearing a lot of stories in the media about, you know, uh, which is, of course, to be expected about, you know, people very frustrated, very upset, very sad. So at least this should help the the overall sense of, you know, positivity, really, in getting through this whole thing. Um, now, uh, what have you actually been in the in the areas that have been hit? And if so, can you give us an idea of what kind of, um, you know, damage has been done yeah I mean, obviously the pictures on tv uh you know illustrate just the sheer scope and size of this uh the area that is underwater is currently the size of uh between new york and boston so you need to put that oh, from a wow. scope perspective it, it's tremendous and you know obviously visually you, your mind's used to seeing things a certain way uh you know, the interstate signs used to using those to guide you as you along the way but here you know having water up to that height uh it really illustrates the challenge that rescue personnel uh, and the Red Cross are having to get access into many of these areas. So that's why right now our first priority is on safety and shelter of all the residents, making sure they have a place to go. And then as the waters recede, we'll move on to the next phase of our operation, which uh, we have over 200 emergency response vehicles that can go out and do a variety of things, such as providing hot meals, um, cleanup kits, supplies. Uh, as residents start to return to their homes, they can help them in that process. And then over the coming weeks and months, we'll start to work on longer-term casework where we'll sit down with every one of the residents uh, and those displaced to, to talk about their specific situation, what are their long-term housing options, uh, what other resources are available from the federal government and other partner agencies as well as the Red Cross. And once again, with a goal of helping them figure out what happens next and helping them start to, to get on a path towards normalcy, which at the end of the day really is what everybody wants. Right, exactly. And just to, you know... Uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, that's what that's what helped. Yeah, we got to get to that point. And now, if somebody wants to help you guys, um, what kind of help do you really need, and and how can they get to that? How can they get to you? Yeah. So there's actually a couple things they can do. Obviously, a financial contribution is the best way you can help. Uh, and you can visit redcross.org. You can also text the word Harvey to nine zero nine 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 to make a ten dollar donation. But there are a couple other things. Obviously, we said we have about twenty six hundred volunteers who are or will be involved in this effort. Um, currently, but we're going to need the next waves of volunteers over the weeks and months to come. So if any of your listeners want to visit redcross.org, they can sign up as a volunteer. They can also Google uh, their local Red Cross office. Those offices uh, will be doing trainings on an ongoing basis over the weeks and months to come that can help those interested parties to become a Red Cross volunteer and either deploy to support this effort um, or deploy to support other uh, potential storms and impacted areas uh, in the country. We're not in the heart of hurricane season yet. The, the height is still to come, so we could see additional storms. Uh, we're looking at storms that are potentially occurring right now. Uh, if you look at the tracks uh, in the Atlantic, so we have to be prepared for those, uh, as well as single-family fires and other small disasters that happen in communities across the country. So redcross.org for that or reach out to your local chapter. And then one final piece I would say uh, for those who want to help us is, you know, in any disaster of this magnitude, you start to see stories that, that look at 
you know, how can we improve what we do? So right. we want to be very transparent because we are your American Red Cross. We're a collection of volunteers from across the country. So if your uh, listeners have family uh, that are in this area, that are seeing something they think can improve, um, reach out to us. Let us know on our Facebook page. Let us know on Twitter. Call us or email us because we want to identify challenges uh, in, when they're small before they become larger issues because we're leading with transparency. We want the American public who's been so generous right now with their financial contributions to know how their donor dollars are being spent. Uh, I could say I didn't drive across the, or fly across the country and, and many other volunteers didn't fly across the country to do anything less than provide the people on the ground the best level of comfort and care that we can. Uh, so where your American Red Cross, meaning everyone who's listening to this, plays a role in making us the strongest organization we can be. Um, so let us know. We're taking that feedback. That's why we're doing interviews like this and, and with other national media outlets who will talk to us um, because that's that's we, we have an obligation to people who trust us with their money to make sure it gets to the right place, and we're committed to doing that. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I hope you guys get as much help as you can, and, and uh, hopefully I'll, I can get myself over there and, and do more actual in-person coverage from this. And who knows, maybe one day you and I can meet in person. So Absolutely. Um, I would love that. That would be great. Well, thanks again, Jonathan. Please stay safe, and my, our prayers are with you guys over there. And thank you so much for everything that you do. And what, real quick, can you give us a, a really quick one more time, what is it that they can text and the website? Yes. It's Harvey. Text Harvey to 90999 and you can make a $10 donation. Uh, and always, you can do the Red Cross order. We have all the images uh, and information about how this response is going on. And there's always follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Red Cross. We're posting great content from across the state of Texas uh, that really illustrates how your donor dollars are being put to use. So um, we encourage your listeners to do that, and we'll, uh, we'll see you down the road, Eddie. Wonderful. Thanks again, Jonathan. Stay safe, my friend. You take care. Yep, thank you. Thanks. Yep.